Greetings Internet, thanks for clicking. This tutorial is going to cover recreating the planet Mercury using CC Sphere. To address the elephant in the room, here Jumbo, have a banana. There's a really nice plugin from Video Copilot that's free to use called Orb. However, Orb uses your graphics card and if like me you bought a laptop, then you can't swap out your graphics card unless you know what you're doing. This tutorial is for anyone who wants to use the native plugins for whatever reason and it'll be using expressions. In it I'm going to take a texture map of Mercury, apply CC Sphere, then use an expression to link its position and rotation to a camera and light source. Then I'm going to add an atmosphere. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, but I figure if you're going to use CC Sphere for planets then you'll probably want to know how to get the full planet look. This video is part of a series of tutorials where I'll be recreating the solar system inside After Effects. Most of the time I'll be using Orb, as the videos will be looking at different aspects of a planet. But where needed I'll break out into a separate tutorial like this one, or point out what you need to do differently if you're not using Orb. Ok so let's get started. First off we need an image texture map for the planet. An image search from Mercury produces a lot of the same result. Mercury was first mapped by NASA in 1975, with the Mariner 10 spacecraft. This mapped around 45% of the surface and seems to be the main source for texture maps. But in 2011, Messenger did a much more comprehensive visit to the first planet. NASA have released all their imaging data, including this lovely texture map. It is false colour, but when you're setting up a planet in black space with a strong orange sun, a little false colour looks so much more visually interesting. There are some tiny bits around the poles missing, but I use Content Aware Fill in Photoshop to cover those up, although I did then blur the result as Content Aware couldn't cope with the spherical textures. If we now make this a 3D layer and add a camera, default 50mm is fine, then you can track back and forth and the camera behaves correctly. Obviously if I rotate the camera, the illusion is broken. The first thing we need to do is get the layer to rotate to always face the camera. Go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient and choose Orient Towards Camera. Now when I rotate the camera, nothing appears to happen, which is good, sort of, but now we need to get the CC Sphere rotation controls to compensate for the camera's position. And to do that, we'll need to use expressions. Over the years, the After Effects community has come up with different methods and Rich Young on Pro Video Coalition has assembled the various options. I don't know if it's not been kept up to date, but I had to modify it slightly. My version is in the description below, but basically we're using trigonometry to determine the distances and angles between the planet and the camera. We'll add the expression by copying it from the description, and then holding down the ALT key, click on the X rotation stopwatch, and then paste it in. You can still keyframe your own rotations, so the planet can spin, but the expression will sort out the apparent rotation. We'll also add the Y rotation expression too. Now I'm going to add my Sun. I'll go to Layer, New, Light and choose a parallel light. The first thing that happens is the layer disappears. That's because 3D layers by default have the material option set to accept lights. To turn these options off, twirl down the layer and then the material options and change accept lights to off. Now of course the planet's shadow doesn't correspond to where the sun is, but before we sort that out I'm just going to tidy something up. When I move my camera it's possible to lose track of where I am in 3D space, so I'm going to use a 3D null object to know where the planet is. I'll go to layer, new, null object, and then hit the enter key and name the layer Mercury Null. There's a second benefit for doing this. My light is already behaving like a sun by giving me parallel light, but it's only in one direction. I might want to set my planet into an orbit, so I can use the Null object's position as the point of interest for the light. Click P on the Null layer to view position, and then twirl down the Light Layers options, twirl down the Transform settings and using the Pick Whip, link point of interest to the Null's position. So far so meh, but I still have to link my CC Sphere's light settings to my actual light. Expressions again sorts this. Now there's loads of guides out there for this and Pro Video Coalition got me close, but it didn't seem to work with the 3D light. I've made a slight change, 
but if you paste these two expressions into the light height and then the light direction settings, CC Sphere's light will match your sun's. A word of warning, if you rename your parallel light, the expression will break. But if you paste the new name into these sections, you'll be back on track. Last thing, it's up to you, but if you want the dark side of the planet to be really dark, go into the shading options for CC Sphere and turn off the ambient light. You can mess with the other settings here too. And that's it. You can't have bump maps, uh, and I'd recommend not getting so close to the planet that the layer starts to flip around, although you can increase the radius if you need to get closer. Oh, I nearly forgot the atmosphere. This is faking, but it works. So let's recreate a new solid by going to layer, new solid, make it square and set the color to be the color you want. I'm gonna go for an alien orange look. Next, select the circle option in the mask tools and double click to set a circular mask on the new solid. The next thing I'm going to do is duplicate the mask and the easiest way to do that is to make sure it's selected and then go up to the edit menu and select duplicate. Now I'll set the second masks mode to subtract, expand the options and I'll reduce the expansion going into the negative to about minus 60 pixels and I'm going to feather the mask as well all the way up to about 250. You can see I'm now getting something quite atmosphere -y. Next, let's make this a 3D layer. Turn off Accept Lights again and have it always orient towards camera, again. Let's make it a child of our Mercury Null object. You see, it pays to be semi-organized. And use the position coordinates, let's set it to center onto the null. Now, before I scale the layer up to match the size of the planet, I'm gonna sort out the shadow. And this is simple to do but really kind of huh. make a copy of your mercury texture layer, drag it above your atmosphere layer and set the transfer mode to luma mat. Now, if I solo the atmosphere layer, I can barely see it. That's because the luma mat layer isn't all one shade. So we'll add a tint layer to the luma mat layer and set both colors to white. and I'll put it above CC Sphere, so that if I make it visible and add it to the solo, we can see that we now have a white sphere that's linked to the camera and the sun and the Mercury Null layer. Let's go ahead and unsolo those layers and turn off the visibility for our new Luma mask. Now, when I was prepping my teaser video, because I was using 2D layers in 3D space, every so often they bisected each other. I can correct for this. Seeing as everything is now parented to the null object, if I move my atmosphere layer in Z space to minus 20 and then set the Z's anchor coordinate to 150, this will keep my atmosphere layer always in front of my planet layer. Now let's scale up the atmosphere, just do this by eye to match the planet and set the transfer mode to add or screen, it's dealer's choice, and that's it. You can add a blur to the Luma Matte layer to add an atmosphere haze. You can mess around with the radius and scaling of that atmosphere layer. And of course, you can change the color either by changing the solids color or by using tint or hue saturation or curves, whatever you want, really. But thanks very much for watching. Next up in the series is Venus. And for that, I'll be creating a planet wide cloud cover. If there's something in the teaser you liked, which I haven't covered here, or you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do.